praise for answered prayers, part three. Praise for answered prayers, part three. We're taking the message from John chapter six, one to 12. I'll read one, you read two, and then we'll get to 12, and then we'll dissect it. After this thing, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. You read the next verse. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, take note, he lifted up what? And so a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, take note of that, when shall we buy bread that this may eat? If you know what to do, you will never panic. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. There's a lad here which had five belly loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Take note of, let's read verse 11 together. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed the disciples, disciples to them that were set down, Likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Verse 12, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What is praise? Praise is acknowledging God for who he is. Praise is acknowledging God for who he is. We praise God by magnifying him in words, songs, clapping and dancing. While prayer is communing with God based on his word and our relationship with him. As a prayer is communing with God based on his word and our personal relationship with him. So praise for answered prayer simply means, prayer simply means magnifying God in words, songs, and dancing, and asking God to intervene in our favor in a given situation. As it's magnifying God in words, songs, dancing, and asking God to intervene in our favor in a given situation. And God will intervene in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you how to praise for answers. It's not enough to praise. How do you praise for what? Answers. To enjoy miracles from God, you have to create an environment for him to manifest. God does not manifest everywhere. Please take note. He's omnipotent. Omniscient. But he does not manifest Everywhere. Natural environment is limiting. God cannot manifest in a natural environment. You can only bat an enviable future by creating and living a supernatural lifestyle. There is a protocol for the Holy Ghost to manifest. You must... Let me say this to you. There's a protocol. There's a what? One time, I went to a high place where presidents stay. And they said, if a president's wife is coming, they were giving us tutorial. I started laughing. They said, you must not stand at a particular point. So that is the only place where the husband of the president's wife, where the husband is the only one permitted to stand there. So we began to laugh. That's the protocol of that environment. Is that true? Are you going to have now? If you're going to any presidential palace, they will even tell you there's a protocol. This is the protocol. Drop your phone here, walk in, the screen. I'm not giving an instance. There's a protocol for God to step into your affairs. If you think God will just step in, it's a lie. There's a what? There's a protocol. If you go to certain companies, they'll tell you until your seat belt is on, you won't drive in. There are companies say, if you say you are the key, you are the chief of the head of state, you must put on your seat belt before they allow you to enter that environment. Every environment has a what? 
the Holy Ghost to manifest, there's a protocol. If you don't obey and observe that protocol, the Holy Ghost will not manifest. So I hear. If you look at the man called David, he had a lifestyle of constant praise. When you become consistent and persistent worship of God in praise, your miracles will flow without stress. So there is what you must do. That's what you must do. What is it that I must do? That's where I'm going. For me to, for God to have access to the, my affairs. What must I do? What must I want? For God to have access to my affairs. Number one, learn to be thankful to God. Learn to be what? What must I do for God to have access to me? Learn to be thankful. Now listen, people of God. You are not the first to go through challenges. See the way I'm suffering. You are not the first. Jesus, the holiest to ever live on earth, without blemish, without sin, perfect, yet experienced challenges. He was in the wilderness with 5,000 men, excluding women and children, and there was no food. There was no what? There was no food. They've been with him for days. They were hungry. The one who can do all things. But he understood that there has to be a protocol for God to intervene. If it was you who said the truth, you would grumble. Am I talking? You would have said, God, look at me. Serving you very well. My children have not eaten since morning. No, even, not even 500 naira cash. Are you still in heaven? Before where will God be? You ask all manner of what? Questions that are unnecessary. Jesus created the platform for God to intervene. May you understand what I'm talking about. He followed the protocol of heaven's intervention. In verse 11 of that scripture, he said, and Jesus took the loaves, only five loaves, listen, listen carefully, only how much? To feed 5,000 people. Men, if you put the women and the children, you know, it will be thousands. So because they couldn't count, they only counted the men. So, and they know in the crusade, the women are lost many, more. So it must have, they must have been more than that 5,000. So just calculate the number. Then they had how many loaves? You have a, a Project of 500 million, and what you have in your account is 5,000. So you won't grumble. Jesus understood the principle. He understood what? He knew what to do. He didn't grumble. And if you follow his example, you get the same result. He said, Father, this is the protocol. I thank you. That's why his prayers were hard, hard, faster than anybody. He said, Now, our Father, you read it. Our Father, start up. Which are in? Hallowed. That means praise and then pray for his kingdom. Give us this day. So your daily bread will not come until you hallow his name. If you don't hallow him, you keep wallowing. Jesus said, these people don't know the pattern, but I know the pattern. Father, thank you. When there was no love yet. You don't thank God when it has happened in prayers. You thank God before it happens in prayers. If you want God to answer your prayers, thanksgiving must precede your request. I mean, understand it. Before you make any request, you must thank God first. Are you getting me, sir? I mean, understand the protocol. You understand the protocol? Five, he said, Jesus to the fellow, and when he had given what? When he had given thanks, he displayed the disciple. May you get your own results like him. You cannot thank God and remain on the floor. Yes, there are challenges. But learn to focus on God for supernatural intervention in the midst of such challenges. God speaking said, Behold, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 20, 32 verse 27. And the verse 7 said, There's nothing too hard for God. He 
He said, with men it may be impossible, but with God all things are worth. Luke 18 27. God can make it happen, but he will not come in unto you. Protocol is what? It's observed. Sir, here. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you look at the God of all possibilities and praise him. When you praise him, you have created an what? Atmosphere for him to intervene. God will intervene today. He can turn this around. That challenge is nothing to God. Abraham staggered not the presence of God, but strong in faith, giving glory to God. He created the protocol. Now listen. Everywhere impossible situations turned, this protocol was observed. Thanksgiving before God intervened. Check everywhere. Lazarus, Father, I thank you. 5,000 to be fed with five loaves and two fishes. Father, I thank you. Abraham, before Sarah, as he was born, he sang another promise of God to unbelievable but strong in faith, giving glory to God. Do you understand that it is now? But your own, you are angry. You are very angry. In fact, some of you now, even this service, you are very angry. Father, I, I, am, I am very good. There was one testimony I was laughing. One said, I'm overjoyed. He said, Father, I'm very, very joy. One of them said, I'm overjoyed. Somebody was writing later. He said, I am very joy. He was starting the letter. He said, Dear Dollar, I am very joy. <laughs> so the person was what? Overjoyed. I think one of the testimony saw it. I'm over. So you to be very, very joy. Be overjoyed. So if you have put out for joy, rejoice. <laughs> Tell you what? Rejoice. Now, brother, may your understanding of what I'm talking bring forth testimonies in your life. <laughs> Stop limiting God by concentrating on negative issues. He staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So here. Turn your energy to praise instead of murmuring. Now hear this. Satan, problems can't stop the atmosphere of praise. You don't praise focusing on problems. You praise focusing on God. Because there's no problem without a promise from God's word to handle it. So I hear. Learn from Jesus. How can you, five loaves, you know, it's easy to, five loaves for 5,000 men, excluding women and children, put all of them together. Five loaves. Brother, you will complain. Many of you here will complain. Say the truth. Say the truth. Won't you complain? You will complain. That is not the protocol for intervention. Complaining compound problems. It is thanksgiving and praise that opens the door for God to intervene. Say here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? That is heaven's protocol for intervention. Our Father, hallowed be thy name before thy kingdom come. Then give us this day. Your daily bread will not be given if you don't observe the protocol of hallowed be thy name. God must be hallowed before your daily bread can be given. So here. Are you understanding God what God says here? Oh God, you know I'm suffering. God will keep quiet. He said, You have not met the protocol. You are dialing the wrong digit. <laughs> now that you are the owner of MTN, you dial the wrong digit. Will MTN answer you? The telecom company. You are the owner. You say now, I am the owner of this telecom. Answer me. You must dial the right digit. The right did it for heavens to respond is what thanksgiving and praise before heavens will open the door. So here, I have another enter into his cause with what? Enter into the gate with thanksgiving and to his cause with what? Praise. So the gates will never be open. You know why prayer will say we are bombarding heaven? They didn't thank God. If you thank God, you won't bombard. The gate will be open straight. Jesus never bombarded heaven. They just said, Father, thank you. All this are bombarding heaven. How can you bombard heaven? Some people, they think they are doing religion. They say, well, I'm going to bombard. You can't bombard God. Simple protocol. Jesus did not go there to bombard. He said, I bombard. Some people think that you, hey, my, it's not in Zobu, hey, my, hey, my friend. Just tell God, Father, I thank you. That you're sweating does not mean that you're praying. Some people, they think that prayer is when they sweat. They say, now we pray. 
Vicier with the sweat. They go, they, so, <laughs> when some people are praying, I'll be looking at them. They'll be like, they'll be like this. <clears throat> I see which kind of other people just to play. Be, <laughs> play out. Play out. Just say, we are serious in prayer. You know, our church won't pray. God will just say when they say, when you finish shouting like dog, when you're through. <laughs> just tell God, thank you. And praise him. God will be open. Then you now present your request. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. There's no challenge without the word of God. And God will I praise his word. In Psalm 56 verse 4 and verse 10. And God will I praise what? His word. Divine intervention for those who focus on the God and his word. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. One of the greatest forces of limitation is focusing on the wrong things. Focusing on what? Instead of focusing on God and his world, you begin to focus on your problems. Begin to focus on the issues of, of, around you. No, focus on God. The big God who can change your story, turn it around. So here. Now, listen. I've shared it over and over, but it's good to share testimonies. When God said we should go and start a cathedral, listen, we should go and start what? There was no money to start. Money was too plenty. Money was what? There was plenty of money. Physical cash in the bank was too plenty. <laughs> Now, in the natural, as you are focused on, hey, God, where will we get money? Is that not true? How do we get money with this project? Where will the money come from? What is the problem? That's what we should focus on. That's why I'm one of you. You worry yourself till your name has been changed to worry. Every day you worry, 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 worry. Worrying does not solve problem. You see, if I know what thing I go do, we worry now. First, I have to tell you to be anxious for nothing. I refuse to focus on the money. Listen. <laughs> when they measure the money, you need faith. It, yeah, have you ever gone to somewhere? You have 15 and then you stand before somebody to buy product. You turn that the thing they want to take is the money that your pocket. What you have is 1,000 and then they say this thing is 1 million. You, know, you will not know whether to go forward or to go backward. <laughs> have you ever gone to a jewelry shop like that? It's a jewelry shop. You see those kind of things. You see one small diamond. You think that is 5,000. You go there. They say, well, this is 1.2 million. <laughs> then you don't know whether you will start pricing. <laughs> it's a, this thing, where did you talk? And I hear where, where did you talk? One point. And what is your pocket is what? One thousand. Nine. Where do you price from? And if the, the way they will look at you, they will know that you don't have the money because <laughs> if you go to a jewelry shop, they don't, they don't open there, they use key. They lock them. When they want to buy, they now bring the key and open. And they will look at you. They say, which one? Point to one you want. When you point, they say, the, the, the person wants to sell you will keep it and be looking at your face. <laughs> in case you want, to, you want to cause trouble, they lock the gate. They always have security people with jewelry shops with gun. So if you come to steal the man, you go fight. <laughs> now, in that kind of situation, where do you start to, to price from? Jesus had only how many loaves? So where will he start the prayer from? You have concentrated on the negative thing. No money for school fees. No money for house rent. No money for this. So the whole of your energy is in the wrong direction. Forget those problems. Focus on God. I said, God, you are too big. This thing can't harass me. So, immortal God. He said, ha! Invisible God. Immortal God. How great. He said, I'm coming. What school fees? Take. What again? House rent? Take. What again? Take. You are, saying, you, know, you are not looking at the problem. That's how it works. But if you remove your eyes from him, and then... You are singing, oh, immortal God, no school fees. Invisible God, no house rent. You say, okay. I want to answer you. The protocol for heavens to respond 
is to take your eyes off your problems and focus on God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We went to the site. I didn't say, oh God, where do we get money from? I never asked him that question. Not even in my heart. I know the protocol. I know the what? They gave bill. I said, let's go to the site to pray for seven hours. I never, look, I'm standing before God. I never knelt down to pray. Oh God, this money supplied. I know the protocol. Never. Ask the Holy Ghost. I never knelt down to say, God, this money, this money. Even as we are talking now, if you know the bills they are calling, I've never knelt down to say, Father, this money, the more. Where will it come from? What I do, Father, I thank you. That's all. I know the protocol. I know the what? That's how it works. Tell them what that's how it works. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. Focus on God. Thank him. Praise him. He will intervene. And God will intervene concerning your affairs. The protocol of seven hours praise. We have not lacked supply to today. That's where I'm going. We have not lacked what? Every time there is a need, heavens will supply. Because we were able to meet what? The protocol of heaven by giving God thanks and praise. So here. Do you have any big thing before you? Give God thanks and praise. Before you make your request known to God. So here. Making your request known to God without this process will never go through. So I hear. And I, I want to say something to you. Have you ever stayed like this? Out of suffering, you hear a voice say to you, you, you will suffer. <laughs> have, you said, have you heard that kind of voice before? He said, you, God does not love you. Have you heard that before? Now, listen, you must be a Bible. So I'm going to show you. So it happens. Don't deceive yourself. It happens. You still like God say, if God loves you, why are you suffering like this? You, so have you even had it today before you come? Okay. If God loves you, see you now. See you. All your mates are married. If God loves you, it's Satan who is speaking. He will tell, he tells everybody, don't say, don't hear. He say, okay, if God loves you, why you fail? If, you lo if God loves you, see the way you're suffering. He will tell you, he will, he will be speaking to your ear. If God loves you, I think all your mates, see your mates now. See the way you did. Then you now stay on your own and say, it's true. <laughs> so if God really loves me, why am I like this now? He's the one talking. He's the one talking. He wants to demoralize your spirit. But at that moment, you can't praise. He so, okay, if he loves you. I think Lalo gave you a notice to quit. I think he has given you. You are still, you are still believing this man preaching. David, if you now, that they preach where they believe. Landlord, don't give you face reality. See, landlord, forget this. Thing. David is talking. Say, Bible. He's the one. Satan is the one preaching, talking to you. At that point, tell him, shut up, you devil. God is ever faithful. He loves me. He will even tell you, God does not love you. Some of you see that, just like, if God loves me, <laughs> then why did all this in the happen? If God loves me, <laughs> if God loves me, now I'm going to suffer like this. No, God don't love me. And he loves you. Let no devil deceive you, God. And his love cannot be changed. I'll show you from the Bible. It is when you know God loves you, God will know that you know. And then turn with me to Jeremiah 31. Say, God loves me. Satan! Say with me, Satan! You can't stop God from loving me. You can't stop God from hearing me. You can't stop God from responding to me. Say, you can't stop God, Satan. It's too late from loving me. Satan, you can't stop God from hearing me. You can't stop God from responding to me. Glory to God. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Anytime Satan reminds you, quote the scripture, meditate on it. The Lord had appeared of old unto me. Personalize it. Put your name there. Put your name, call your name there. Say it. This God, oh, yeah, I have loved with an everlasting love, not, not one week, not a uh, jankara love, not human love that is one minute, one to two, 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 I will kill you. <laughs> love you that, therefore, with loving kindness, avoid drunty. I love you so much, it is not one week love, it's not APC and PDP love. 
Those are fake loves. Those are what? Those are those kind of love where you can change party in three weeks. Those are not the love what is talking about. Not talking about those kind of love. Talk about genuine love. Not love where somebody goes, I love you, love you. The next day the person won't kill you. No, those are not kind of. It's not talking about that kind of love. It's talking about everlasting love. Say so here. Yeah. May your miracles be born today. Please don't ever sit down and think that God does not love you. Say with me, God loves me. Don't doubt his love. It's I love you with an everlasting. It's not a love of one four year term. Don't ever, sit down with the mind you look. It is in the midst of challenges you will know whether you know God's word. It's easy to say, God, when you face challenges, Satan will, he uses the situations to manipulate. In the midst of challenges, you hear his voice. If God loves you, then why are all these things happening? And that times, if you are not a Bible student, you will not sit down in your small place. It's true. If God loves me, how can this thing happen? God does not love me now. He doesn't love me. If he loves me, then why? How can landlord, after I came back from church, landlord now put a notice to, to leave and God love me? God, he doesn't love me. Oh. Look at now, they just said I should leave work. You know why some of you, they return to you, God has something big and you refuse to see it. He closed the brook for, April, for Elijah to go to the widow of Zarephan. Some of you, you are worked, you want to retire. And God said, if you retire from this company, all you will get is one watch. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? So, at times, God will do something to lift you. If they, I was living in a house where they shut the door against me, that was where God called me. So something's happening to you. God, that is, I will live in a place. I have my own place. They said I should come and stay with them. As I, the day, as I was coming, they shut the door. As I got to the door, the, door, the keys were changed. I, tears came down from my eyes. They said, now nah, I will use you. So if they didn't shut that door, I wouldn't, hear, I wouldn't have heard from God. God said, I will do something that will make you look at me. You know, Moses, he made sure fire was burning somewhere. He, they shut the door. Shut the door like this. I came, put my key. It was not opening. As I was... She has come down from me and said, now I will use you. The same day, I got a better apartment. The same day. The same what? So if that door was not shut, I wouldn't have been where I am. Some of you, you think that God is punishing you. He's only polishing you. God is not punishing you. It's only what? Punishing you. May God intervene concerning your life. Jesus did it in John chapter 6. He did it in John chapter 11. The same way, go intervene on your affairs in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Are you praising God for divine intervention? Yeah. Glory to God. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say to yourself, God loves me. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. Say it the one and mean it. It's too good. I'm going to follow heaven's protocol. I'm going to give God high praises for the doors to be open for me to get to my high places. Say it one more time. I'm going to give God high praises for the doors to be open for me to get to my high places. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We are going to praise God for the next seven minutes. Serious praise. Father, I thank you. One more time, lift those hands to heaven and say, Father, thank you. Go ahead and thank him for all that you've heard today. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and give thanks to God. Thank him and thank him and thank him. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name. In seven minutes, you are going to praise God. This time, you are not praising God for a request. The request time will come. Praise Him for who He is. Jesus said, Father, I thank you before He made the request. Is that through? So the request is not the first thing. You are praising God to, for the doors to be open. You know what praise is? How many of you have seen presidents blow siren? 
The siren is your praise. It goes ahead to clear what? Then your request comes for it to be answered. So praise is what? You know when siren is blowing, what do you do? So praise is the siren that opens the door for her access. Are you getting what I say now? So you are praising God for supernatural what? Siren. And then the doors will be open. Anything you place at that time, heaven's the door. Just one. Are we ready? Expect your own miracle as we praise God now. I Jesus, Jesus, I'm not gonna go, 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 I
shout hallelujah. Now you have met heaven's protocol. The gates are open. You are going to declare, based on Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, is it the door of open, no man can shut it. You will say it this way. I declare you month of April, open 2023, in the name of Jesus. Open in my favor with life, with strength, with health, with wisdom, with vitality. Are you going to now? With progress. You know the things you want to see in the month of April. Is that through? For the church, he said, with unusual grace for speed. For unusual grace for what? That's one for a church. Now go ahead in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name. In verse 7, he said, The door have shut, no man can open. There are doors that will be shut, doors of dead, doors of attacks, doors of evil report, doors of shame and reproach, doors of sickness, command them shut. It's in April, no sickness, no emergency, no fire outbreak, no accident, no dead of anyone around me, including me. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare. In Jesus' mighty name. It says it's a good thing to give thanks unto that to show their loving kindness. It says it shall be anointed with fresh oil. May you be freshly anointed. Amen. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. From today, no dry season. Amen. After pray, the walls of Jericho came down flat. I decree every obstacle to your miracles, to your blessings, today they will crumble. Amen. And after praise, the Lord himself has good adventures. Whatever has ganged up against you and I, our destinies today, God will take vengeance. Amen. Every gang up against your marriage, vengeance. Amen. Every gang up against your promotion, vengeance. Amen. Every gang up against your appointment, vengeance. Amen. Every gang up against your fruitfulness, vengeance. Every gang up against your marital peace, vengeance. Amen. Every gang up against your blessing and fruitfulness, vengeance. Amen. Whatever is ganging up against your academic pursuit, vengeance. Amen. Anyone who has vowed and cast spell on you, God will take vengeance. Amen. Whoever wants you dead, God will take vengeance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. By this place, whatever is called to redemption, that anyone say no. You will not make progress. God will stand up and fight for us. Amen. Evil men shall go down. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. He said, We beautify the meek with salvation. By this place, anything missing in anyone's life that salvation offers, take the full of it. Amen. The benefits of redemption, they are released to you, you fool. That's not healing, blessings, breakthrough, wisdom, strength, all of them. Receive them in the name of Jesus. It is done. Give him thanks and praise. Now the prophetic with David Ibiomi. May the praise of today open you up to a season of celebration. This month of April shall be to you a month where God himself will lift you. Resurrection power will be at work in your life. Amen. 
nothing will make you to remain on the floor. In the name of Jesus. Just like he rose, you too will rise. All the forces in hell can't keep you down. Break forth and shine. In the name of Jesus. That sickness leaves your body. You have praised him. May God keep lifting you. Enjoy a blessed week. In Jesus' mighty name.